thing hello everyone good evening uh, we are here today to discuss uh, about the recent news breaking news that is all over the uh, social media regarding what uh, mr donald trump the president of the united states has recently said that uh, usage of tylenol in pregnancy that is paracetamol or acetaminophen in pregnancy uh, is a cause for autism so uh, we are getting bombarded with questions from all our patients um, regarding this and regarding a lot of other myths that are out there uh, which cause autism so we thought that we will ask uh, the expert himself dr samir dalwai he um, is the is a senior developmental pediatrician practicing in mumbai he was uh, my teacher and my mentor in 2015 16 and since then has trained uh, multiple developmental pediatricians he is the national coordinator for the fellowship program itself so um let's uh, ask sir uh, about all these myths and uh, in detail about what mr trump has said whether that is true and whether that is to be believed immediately the fda will be notifying physicians that the use of a said uh, well let's see how we say that acid acetaminophen acetaminophen is that okay which is basically commonly known as tylenol during pregnancy can be associated with a very increased risk of autism so taking tylenol is uh not good so this is what uh, mr donald trump had to say earlier uh, two days ago So uh, let's ask uh, sir the first question uh, Dr Pubali over to you uh, so I am Dr Pubali Deka I am a developmental pediatrician from Guwahati so uh, Sami sir is very well known to all of us uh, to the entire nation so Sami sir uh, uh, president trump has made a very his reignited a uh, controversy by mentioning that acetaminophen or paracetamol uh, when given to pregnant women is linked to uh, autism so do you think it is a, a valid scientifically valid statement or so is it uh, actually a very harmful or a false statement which he has made yeah first and foremost good evening to all my wonderful friends and colleagues and thank you for this uh, very important call because i think everybody across the country all the iapians need to know this because we are getting inundated by calls from worried parents and mothers so i think this is a very irresponsible and unnecessary statement made by a person who is in a very important position because it just creates fear mongering and guilt in the minds of parents as it is we know that the parents especially the mothers are so badly stressed and very unhappy with all that is happening and addition to do something which puts guilt on them is unnecessary we all know that paracetamol or acetaminophen or tylenol as it's called in america is a very commonly taken medicine for uh, a, a fever and for pain and everybody has been prescribing that so the ladies and the mothers who have been taking it during pregnancy are now unnecessarily going to feel worried and they are going to feel very guilty that having done this is what has caused the problem in their child so i think it was completely unnecessary and not needed at all thank you dr pubali thank you sir so um, hi yeah so i'm dr nimish here i'm a developmental pediatrician practicing in cochin so there is so much of misinformation out here so what is the current scientific evidence say about uh, is there any link between paracetamol and autism yeah so dr nimi again very good question see the problem has been since 1943 when dr leo kenner first described the 11 cases of autism we have been seeing so many medications and so many theories and cures coming out for it because one we really have never found out a cure for autism and hence unfortunately what has been happening is we have been targeting the symptoms and we have been only giving medications or interventions or treatment directed at alleviating the symptoms and that obviously will never lead to a complete going away of the problem and that's why the problem has never got better so we've had such what uh, you know very weird treatments like lsd can you believe it at one time was considered as a treatment i'm sure all of you know that paper on linking autism to uh, 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 to the vaccines and then the enough research showed that vaccines have nothing to do with it that paper was rejected dr wakefield had to give up his medical license and then bathiomersol and mercury many things have been 
implicated. Now we have to understand very clearly that all of these were associations. It was not shown as a causative link in research. So some people who are doing a particular thing, it was associated with the increase of autism in those children. So it was just probably coincidental. So research has been finding associations, not the causative link. So for example, since the 1960s, when the or 50s, when the autism started increasing in the world, the Cold War also started. So it does it mean that the Cold War caused autism. So in the 70s, you had the flower generation and you had the rock, uh, rock and roll and the rock revolution. So does that mean rock, uh, the, the rock music caused autism? So these are associations and this has been happening on and off and on and off because we have not really found a true cause or causes of autism. So this is why these things come up all the time and they are so-called published in research, but they are associations. They are not the causative link. I hope that answers your question, Nimi. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Dr. Priya Jain. Uh, I am a developmental pediatrician who is practicing in the Delhi NCR region. Uh, so what I would like to know is that, uh, you know, the head of a nation, a huge nation, is making such a bold statement uh, without any backing, as, we, as you've already said. So how does this impact the parents, especially parents of children who already have autism, they are already under so much of guilt and, you know, getting to have this statement of some of a drug, which is supposed to be the safest. Uh, so how does that impact the parents? A good question. Affects on multiple levels. First and foremost, it reduces guilt, as we said. Second, what does a pregnant lady now who has a fever or, a, you know, she who otherwise will take paracetamol, what does she do now? Does she take paracetamol? Does she not? So it causes confusion to a pregnant lady. That's point number one. Point number two is it also obfuscates and diverts away from the real causes of autism and the real intervention that needs to be taken for autism. It only causes further confusion and frustrates parents and society at large and the medical world at large that here's another red herring, here's another you're chasing the wrong uh, rabbit down the wrong hole. And it eventually ends up to this frustration, oh, we can never really solve this huge conundrum of autism. And unfortunately, there we go back again to symptom-based treatment. We are trying to get the speech better. We are trying to get the behavior better, so on and so forth. And that is why it's very important that pediatricians and especially associations like the Indian Academy of Pediatrics and all you youngsters should come out and say this very clearly again and again and again so that enough parents hear you that, look, this is nothing that you need to be paying attention to. Don't get confused. Don't get distracted. Don't get carried away by all this kind of information. And that's really the youth and the younger leaders and the younger pediatricians and development pediatricians and all the IPNs who need to be able to give across this message very clearly. I would encourage all of you to make some reels and, uh, you know, on social media and get this message out, not just to other pediatricians, but also to the parents. Yeah, thank you. So we need to make a bold statement ourselves. Absolutely. Thanks. Hi, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Ashrita. I'm a developmental and behavioral pediatrician from Vijayawada, uh, Andhra Pradesh. Sir is my mentor. So from today morning, I have so many questions uh, asked by parents and also my colleague friends and also friends. <clears throat> so one thing I understood was parents were really worried when they read the scary lines. So what do you wish, sir, that parents know about this autism, the role of genetics, epigenetics and medication use, what we studied? So what do you wish all these parents knew about these things? Yeah, you are very right, Asrita. See, the problem is that we are not able to give them a clear-cut answer about what causes autism. And the symptomatic treatment that we give doesn't obviously cure the whole thing. So there lies the whole problem. So what do we know for sure? We know for sure that this is a neurodevelopmental problem. That means it is associated with the brain and it causes a problem in the development of the child. We also know that it is due to some genes and some alteration in the genetic pattern of the child because we have proved the inheritance patterns and we have shown studies that it is a higher incidence in uh, twins, etc. So that has been completely uh, proved. That is not a problem at all. What we are now looking at is what is the epigenetics of it? And now we also know this is not just the genes, but it is the epigenetics, something in the environment that is triggering it. The Western world, unfortunately, always tries to find something in terms of a materialistic cause or a materialistic solution 
because that can be packaged that can be scaled up and that can be sold and huge amount of money can be made about it so i believe we are looking down the wrong side that are looking at autism as something which has been caused by a substance or something that can be solved by a medication or a substance because that's where the money for research is uh, absolutely put up and that's where the money will be made is the investments that are made can be recovered so this is the problem and we need to look at how besides implicating a substance like a vaccine or a molecule how do we find out what else is causing it so as all of you know my personal work in the last 23 24 years on autism and most of us have trained together is basically i believe it's a gene which causes a lack of social engagement in the child and the child whom i the, the theory which i call is ati vastu magnata and kam manushya magnata is that because of some genetic uh, deficiency these children are more involved and uh, attracted and drawn towards objects and less involved and less drawn towards humans so today is not the time to discuss this here it's available on my youtube channel as well as instagram and all of you are aware about it but the whole problem is in the lack of social engagement in the world today due to the changing environment where the families have become smaller the amount of time spent with a child is getting smaller and at the same time too many objects and too many games etc are given to the child especially this object is one object which is replacing not only all humans but all other objects and this induces patterns and further the object based focus on children so i think i would like all of you to come up with your own work all of you are seeing hundreds and thousands of children put up your studies put up your research publish it i'm sure we'll find a cause more simpler than what we are just trying to find in the labs or in mice brains and things like that i think the cause is far more easier to find it's just that we are looking at something that can be marketed probably that's why we are not able to find a good solution for autism yes sir thank you Aliska, please unmute yourself. So, as developmental pediatricians, how should we address the hesitancy around vaccines, especially when uh, such claims are made by the most powerful and public people in the world? So, many parents are scared to give their children vaccines, and in a country like India, where uh, immunization is a um, a right of all children, uh, how do we address this vaccine hesitancy? See, that's a very important question. Again, the Indian Academy of Pediatrics has repeatedly put out guidelines saying that vaccines are not uh, the cause of autism. However, when it comes to a parent in the lab, it's not just a research world; it's a practical world. So, first and foremost, we know the importance and the benefits of vaccines, and vaccines have saved more lives in the world than any other medical intervention. So, I think you should say that because look at polio. I mean, years back. so many people who had all their life there to suffer because of polio uh, measles i mean even when i was early residency there was the wards used to be full of measles patient i'm sure many of my colleagues and peers would agree but i don't think you guys have even seen measles in the wards and so many conditions are being prevented by uh, vaccines at the same time we must be very clear to say that autism is a neurodevelopmental issue it is a genetic problem and hence the child is actually born with the condition the symptoms come later the problem is that parents identify autism as a lack of speech and speech naturally as you know comes up by a year and a half or so which coincides just after the time we give the mmr vaccine the other confusion is that many parents say my child was talking but then there was a kind of a regression after giving the vaccines and i have always said this that those are not true meaningful words they were just echolalia meaningless repetitions very often so that anagram which i have always taught all of you my students i am p did the child say whatever she was saying i interactively looking at the person meaningfully both of them knew the meaning of it and purposefully so was the child looking at the mother saying mamma engaging the mother interacting with the mother knowing that the word mamma is to be used only for my mother and not for my aunt or my uncle or for the wall and calls out mamma because the child wants something there is a purpose so this is very often not the case and they'll come with videos to you and they'll you see my child on the first birthday was saying nursery rhymes but that very often was pattern meaningless purposeless repetition the children with autism pick up which is pattern learning uh, more about that some other time but if you tell this to the parents that this is nothing to do when you gave the onset of vaccines it's definitely going to help the parents much more finally the problem is that as a 
head of state in America, when you know that the incidence is increasing so much and you're supposed to be somebody who's supposed to be taking the care of health of the child and America is not able to do that because the incidence of autism is increasing so much, probably because of the epigenetics where society is falling apart. You Children are not getting that kind of social engagement from the families, not just from parents. Let's not blame the parents for this, but from families and everybody is drawn towards objects and towards mobiles. I think that is what is increasing this incidence. And of course, greater awareness, better diagnosis. So he has to give an explanation and he has to give a solution. So if he doesn't have a solution, which he obviously doesn't, then they're spending billions of dollars on it. And I'm sure the insurance companies are exerting their own pressure. He has to come up with some explanation and if not a realistic scientific explanation, at least a diversion. And I'm sure we all know that politicians are very good at diverting attentions away from the real issues that matter. So let's not fall for that. And let's keep up the good work. Let's keep up talking to our parents. And to all of you, my young, uh, younger colleagues, keep looking, keep using your own data, keep publishing your data. I'm sure we'll be able to solve this problem sooner than later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.